Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My husband chose his mother over me. Now I'm divorcing him and taking back control of my life. I, 29 female, married my husband Alex, 29 male, three years back. We knew each other from high school but weren't friends then. After high school, we both went our separate ways. I met Alex when I returned home after completing college. I was dating my ex then. I saw the potential for marriage in my previous relationship but it didn't work out and we broke up. I was grieving for a few months. Alex supported me throughout my difficult phase. Once I recovered from the grief, I started going out with Alex. It was easy because Alex had seen me at the worst point of my life. He had witnessed my vulnerable side and so I was very comfortable with Alex. As we got more serious, I invited Alex to my home. He got along well with my parents and sister. They liked him. Another weekend, he invited me to his mother's home. His mother was widowed at a very young age and she never remarried. Her whole life was centered around Alex's upbringing and education. Alex understood this and has always given importance to his mother's well-being. Alex and his mother lived in separate living spaces but in the same yard and they both had access to each other's houses. The dinner with his mother went fine. I realized that she was a proud mother. She had nothing else to talk about but Alex. I felt happy that we shared great affection for him. In my mind, I accepted her as my mother-in-law. A week later, Alex proposed to me and we got married. After marriage, I moved to Alex's home where he was staying. Alex had a very deep connection with his mother. Even after marriage, at times he stayed over at his mother's place. She was very dependent on him for several things. Alex was in charge of grocery shopping for his mother and driving her around. On some nights when his mother visited us, they both stayed up late to talk and watch TV. This was the time I wanted Alex to spend with me. So, in my head, I began to feel Alex was prioritizing his mother over our marriage. I never complained about this to him. I knew that Alex and his mother had lived together since his childhood. It could be difficult for her to let go of him just like that. So, my twisted head suggested that the only solution left is to make his mother love me more. I thought that would take the load off Alex's back as his mother would ask me to help her with groceries and stuff. This could also bring me closer to him and save more time for me and Alex to spend together. Alex and I made a decision about raising children back when we were dating. I wanted to be a mother. Alex also shared his love for parenting a child. During a one-on-one -on -one talk, my mother-in-law had given me a speech about the importance of having a child. She said that it was the duty of each woman to bear a child and to raise the child even in the absence of a father. She was talking about herself, though I did not think that it was a woman's duty to bear a child. I didn't tell that to her face. I told her that I was ready to become a mother. I sincerely believed that I would get pregnant in the next few months. The next few months were my attempts to please my mother-in-law, but she was never excited to see me. The only time she showed some enthusiasm was when she talked to me about grandmotherhood. She even named my unborn child before I conceived. If I'm recollecting well, the name she gave him was Noah. She inquired about him as if he was alive. I felt creepy about it. Sometimes she would ask me when Noah was coming. Other times it would be about her parenting plans for Noah. She was obsessed with my unborn child. I brought this up with Alex. He thought it was adorable. Since Alex didn't care about how disturbing it was for me, I decided to let it go. When my mother-in-law suddenly stopped bringing up Noah in our conversation, I was surprised. I asked Alex if he had told her about our conversation. He said yes. I asked him why he felt it wasn't necessary to talk to me before revealing our private conversation with his mother. Alex stared at me for a few seconds and said, She's my mother. I'll tell her everything. I should have realized right then and there how messed up my life is. This was a huge red flag, but instead I blamed myself for not being this emotionally connected to my mother. I continued making efforts to stay in my mother-in-law's good books. On the other side, Alex and I were finding it difficult to conceive a baby. We had been trying for at least three years by now. I suggested seeing a doctor, but Alex was hesitant and asked me to wait a few more months. I also felt that not being able to produce a child was making me look worthless in front of his mother. My thought process was still skewed with my head pushing me to do things that would please my mother-in-law. That is how I decided to throw a surprise birthday party for my mother-in-law's 50th birthday. Yesterday was her birthday. My plan was simple. On the night before her birthday, I invited my family and my mother-in-law's sister's family. A few friends of mine and Alex were also present. We gathered at our home the day before yesterday. I didn't let Alex know about my plans much because I was sure he would accidentally leak them to my mother-in-law. Alex came to know about it only when the guests arrived at 10 p.m. I appointed him with the task of waking up mother-in-law and bringing her to the party. She was genuinely happy to see these many people turn up for her birthday. We were waiting for it to turn midnight to cut the cake. But I think I was desperate. I wanted to let her know that this surprise party was arranged by me, so I decided to give a speech. I began by saying how marvelous she is. I also talked about the solid relationship between Alex and his mother. Then I talked about me arranging the party. 
I finished the speech by saying that I wished to do this surprise party thing as a yearly tradition. Then I asked my mother-in-law to make a speech. Her speech started with a dig at me. She took my final point about doing this as a yearly thing. With a sheepish smile, she said that she could see another beautiful woman hosting this party in the coming year. There were a few laughs here and there, but I felt like she meant something. My face went pale. When I looked at Alex, I saw that he was trying hard not to look at me. I immediately asked him to come outside. I asked him what her comment was about. He denied it being anything serious for the first five minutes. That was the first time Alex was seeing me this angry, so he was visibly shaken. He tried to go inside, but I blocked his path. He looked lost, like a child who lost his mother's hand in a crowd. When I pressed him further, he opened up to me. His mother had convinced him that I was infertile. Alex's mother used to push him regularly about having children. She wanted to see her grandson before dying. One day, she asked him whether I had disinterest in having children. He stayed silent for a few seconds before answering that question. But she interrupted by saying that she always knew how much I hated raising a child. She accepted that as the truth. And Alex did not dare to correct her. Such assumptions and guesses about me have rolled that woman's brain for the past few years. That could be the reason for her hostility towards me. Her recent conspiracy was my infertility. Her son Alex was not infertile. She was sure about it because she raised him right. He was the perfect son. She told Alex that I was infertile. Again, he did not deny it or agree to it. So my infertility was established between them. Now she's pushing him to divorce me and marry someone who could conceive a baby. She convinced him about divorcing me and asked him to find an ideal woman. Upon his mother's advice, Alex was trying to find another woman to marry after divorcing me. For a second, I reflected on myself. What was I doing? For the past three years, I have been trying hard to make a lady love me who might have hated me the moment she saw me with her son. I wanted to get back at her somehow, so I rushed inside. I could hear Alex asking me to stop from behind me. I did not. As soon as I was inside, I walked up to my mother-in-law. She was just finishing her speech, so I took over immediately. I tried hard to make the speech that I made not sound like a hysterical rant. During her speech, she talked proudly about not remarrying after her husband's death. I used this point and called her out for keeping her son in her hand. I told people about how she was destroying my marriage. I also blamed Alex for not standing up for himself. My mother-in-law was still calm. She stood up to say that she was annoyed at me for not giving her a baby. Back when I was in my previous relationship, I got pregnant once. Since there was no viability of raising a child, I had to abort the fetus. Alex was the only person who knew about this. I knew that. Among both of us, Alex was the one having trouble. That's why I didn't push him to do tests and treatment. I was ready to give him time. But now, both the son and the mother have decided to push me out of this marriage, claiming that I was infertile. So I narrated to the people present and finally called Alex to confirm whether it was true or not. Alex was trembling while he answered it was true. I saw that my mother-in-law was losing it. I took her birthday cake and threw it at the wall and asked her to get out. She was scared and walked out immediately. Alex tried to go behind her, but I blocked him from doing it. I wanted to see how she dealt with emotions alone. I felt happy that I had saved my self-respect and left home with my parents and sister. This happened the day before yesterday. Today, Alex called me. He cried more than he talked. His mother was not talking to him and that was driving him insane. He told me that I was the one to blame for ruining the relationship between him and his mother. His mother's sister also called to tell me how I shouldn't have been this inconsiderate to a woman who had lived almost all her life alone except for her son. My parents are on my side, but even they tell me that I shouldn't have gone this hard on a weak woman, though I know how crooked she is. Their comments are raising my confusion. Am I the A.H. for calling out my mother-in-law who destroyed my marriage by turning my husband against me? Mother-in-law called me. From her words, I understood that she cared nothing about me or my failing marriage with her son. She denied her son being infertile. She challenged me to take a fertility test with Alex. I have no intention to continue in this marriage, but I just want to give another thrust to this woman's ego. The fertility test is done. As I guessed, Alex has issues with his reproductive system. My only sadness is that I couldn't see my mother-in-law's reaction to these results. Meanwhile, Alex has been trying to get back with me. He has even started blaming his mother in voice notes and calls, but I have no plans to go back. Today evening, mother-in-law sent me a photo of a very gorgeous woman and told me that she'll be her future daughter-in-law. I just sent her back voice notes sent by Alex to me over the last few weeks. In one of the voice notes, Alex has called her an old brat. I blocked her and Alex after that. Enough drama. I'm going forward with divorce proceedings. NTA, but I blame you for remaining a bootlicker for three years. Where was your self-respect? He was prioritizing his mother over you. It's good that you realized your worth, at least now. NTA, the relationship between Alex and his mother goes back to Alex's childhood. 
It is impossible to give Alex a second chance because it will take a huge amount of time for him to get out of the toxic dynamics with his mother and break that pattern. A dependence of this magnitude will make it difficult for Alex to hold up relationships even in the future. My husband Dean, male 23, and I, male 22, have been married for almost four years. We live across the country from my family, so we usually get excluded from family events, but my mom invited me this year. I didn't realize the invitation hadn't included Dean and brought him with me. Before I start, Dean has an adopted brother. They found each other as children who needed support and have been inseparable since. His brother and I have gotten very close and I consider him to be my best friend. We got baking supplies Dean needed to bake the various things he would be bringing to the dinner and went to the house. As soon as we arrived, my oldest brother was surprised to see him and even commented on it, which we both brushed off. I was put on babysitting duty over my nieces. I had met the older two once and had never met the youngest, but still, I had to babysit them. I did my best to watch over them and play dress up. I make a pretty good fairy princess if I do say so myself, but when we were outside, I could see my mom, sister-in-law, and her mom interrogating Dean from the kitchen window. When the girls finally had enough and decided to bother their dad, I went to find Dean who told me about some of the questions he had been asked. Highly personal questions like our sex life, his mental health, and his parents' death. I was disgusted, but he told me to drop it and just get through dinner. I was willing to drop it until his answers were used to put him on blast in front of the entire dinner table. The sister-in-law's mom told the dinner table about a disgusting rumor she'd heard about Dean and his brother being incestuous. I told them it wasn't true, but it made my blood boil, but he grabbed my hand and told me to eat. I listened, but they didn't stop. My mother used his mental health diagnosis as a joke. I was beyond pissed and ignored Dean to ask what their problem with him was. My mom outright told me that she had never invited him and that I had brought him without thinking about how that would make them feel. I demanded they tell me how they feel about my husband, and the sister-in-law's mom once again brought up the rumor. My mom nodded and said she didn't feel comfortable around incest. I once again told her that it had never happened, but she once again said she hadn't invited Dean. I turned to my dad and asked his opinion, but he just shrugged, so I picked up everything Dean had made for the dinner, and we left. Dean thinks I did the right thing, and I think I handled the situation to the best of my abilities. But my oldest brother, his wife, her mom, my mom, and my dad think I'm the bad guy and that I need to apologize. I figured I need an outsider's opinion, so Reddit? Uh, ITA, do not apologize, of course they are all going to side with one another. Bullies always do. Unless you are super interested in getting an inheritance off them in the future, don't go back. Stay away. Disown your parents and question who, or even how, someone can come up with an incest story. Get away. NTA, if you're married and invited someplace, then spouse is part of the invitation, unless explicitly excluded, which would be adequate grounds for declining the invitation. Your mother is TA and your father is spineless for not calling her out on her rudeness. Personally, I wouldn't talk to them again without an apology and would not set foot in their house for quite some time. My parents are very wealthy and during the pandemic purchased a very nice house, desert home, and moved there permanently. It was very expensive, about $2 million. I'm not saying that to brag. It's an important detail. Of course my parents want my family and I to visit them. My husband and I are in our early 40s and I'm currently pregnant. Their house is lovely, but there's a huge problem. The guest bedroom where we stay has no air conditioning and it's extremely hot. We've stayed in the past and I've literally been awake all night sitting in my sweat. We've brought fans, which makes a small difference, but honestly not much. Given how expensive the house was, I asked them why there wasn't air conditioning in the guest bedroom, given that the rest of the house had AC. They laughed and said they weren't sure. Something about the system not working quite right. They said it's not a priority for them to fix because they don't spend any time in the guest room and they don't want to deal with having contractors at the house. I told them how actually it's quite hot in the room and would they mind if I brought a window AC. They were extremely against this and forbid it, saying it would damage the window. I've more or less dropped it because it's not my house and not my business. However, we've been having this conversation for more than a year and it's gotten to the point where my husband and I visit much less because it's so incredibly uncomfortable and we don't sleep at all. They are well aware of the problem. They're annoyed that we won't stay with them more, but haven't done anything to fix the issue. Over Thanksgiving, I called and asked if the EC situation had changed. They laughed and said no, I told them no big deal, but my husband and I will be staying at a nearby hotel. My parents were furious and told me I'm being a huge a-hole about the situation and that Christmas is about spending time with family. The times that I've stayed with them, I am a literal zombie the next day. It's awful. Up uh, ITA, if I stay in a hotel for Christmas because they refuse to fix the AC, they've also put about $1 million into the house, including landscaping, a new kitchen, a pool, but have neglected to fix the AC system. NTA, I would tell them this. 
If you think it's no big deal and you want us to visit and stay there, then swap rooms with us because maybe what we find intolerable is workable for you. If you can't see your way to do this, then you understand perfectly why we can't stay there and you know what to do about it. NTA and you should have done this much sooner, like after the first sleepless night. If there's an option for a hotel or nearby Airbnb type stay, go there. Your parents aren't necessarily AHAs for not having air conditioning. I stay with friends and family who don't have AC, but it's out of their budget and they're not AHs about it all. And I can visit when it's not too hot. But they are massive AHs for being upset that you won't stay with them when their hospitality sucks and they could fix it, but won't. Next story I, 31F, have a friend, 32F, who will call Z for the purposes of this post. For background, Z and I have been extremely close since elementary school, to the point we called each other sisters, and our fathers worked together for years before that. Needless to say, I was close with her family as well, and spent a lot of time with both her parents and her siblings, as well as her grandparents. I was always over at their houses, I attended events at their church, and we did a majority of things throughout school together. In high school, Z met her now husband, who we'll call JJ was a couple years ahead of us, and they spent a lot of time together, and soon her entire world revolved around him. Her priorities completely shifted, she changed, and I wasn't sure if it was for the better. I felt a bit off around him, uncomfortable, and voiced my concern at one point but quickly backed off. I thought perhaps I was just jealous, my antisocial introverted side was popping out, or something equally ridiculous. I wanted Z to be happy, and I didn't want to lose the friendship, especially for what I thought was a stupid reason. So I made an effort to get to know and be friendly with Jay though I still kept a little bit of distance. Fast forward a bit, Z gets pregnant with Jay's baby our junior year of high school, and marries him right out of high school. I should probably mention, Z's family is super religious, as that plays a role in all of this. They settle into married life, and have another kid. Around this time, I go through some, we'll just say rather traumatic shit. My life completely falls apart, and one of the first people I go to, one of the first people I tell, is Z. I stay with her and her family for a bit, including Jay, until I get back up on my feet. Months later, after I'd left, Z comes to me and asks to talk. Of course I say yes. Context, we're 18 and 19 now, she tells me she talked to her husband, and they both wanted to help me learn to trust men again. This throws me off, because I told her in confidence, and she was one of only maybe three people total I had told, and she thinks her husband would be the best for that job. As I knew him and trusted him. I didn't really, but I couldn't tell her that. When I asked Z what she meant, she said she thought I should have sex with Jay, so I could learn to trust men again. Mentally I'm going what the literal fuck, but I just ask her if she's serious, and she can't possibly be suggesting I have an affair with her husband. She doubles down saying she's been so worried about me. And I obviously wasn't doing well. I really wasn't. I was about as low and messed up as it gets, struggling to get through each day and scared of my own shadow. We argued about it for a bit, and she let slip that she was also worried about her husband cheating on her, he'd done it before, and she'd rather know who he was sleeping with. All of this, on top of all the shit already going on in my head, threw me for a major loop. I'm not proud of it, and I'm sure a lot of you will be horrified, but I eventually cave. I can't even begin to say why, my therapist had a field day with that one when I finally told her a month ago. I instantly regretted it, it made me feel worse than ever, and it has haunted me ever since. She has brought up doing it again a few times since, but I am so glad I can honestly say I immediately turned it down every single time. Again, fast forward another six, maybe seven E years, we're in our mid-twenties at this point, I'm so sorry I can't remember exact ages, and after a few hospital visits and years of therapy, I'm doing quite a bit better, not perfect, but getting into a better place. I hadn't spent as much time with ZJ or their family as I used to, but I still went to every birthday, every baby shower, etc. Z has four kids at this point, and she wanted to try for a fifth, apparently she'd seen some kind of trend online about a pregnancy buddies, basically women getting pregnant at the same time with babies, and doing all kinds of shit together, like joint baby showers, birth announcements, classes, shopping at Teta. Z thought this was the best thing ever, and knowing I had talked in the past about wanting kids and a family of my own someday, came to me saying she wanted me to be her pregnancy buddy, I really didn't want to destroy our friendship. So I tried, somewhat, calmly explaining why that wouldn't be a good idea. I wasn't in a relationship, I wouldn't agree to be knocked up by a random stranger, I wasn't in a place financially or mentally slash emotionally to properly support a child, it wouldn't be fair to the kid to bring it into the world when I wasn't ready for it. She insisted everything would work out and I couldn't wait for everything to be perfect or I'd never have any kids. Z said I could get money from the government for any babies I had, and I wouldn't have to get pregnant by a stranger since Jay had already offered. And also, he could be a present, active father in the child's life, or he and Z would adopt the baby if I didn't want it. I really tried explaining to her everything wrong with this plan. First, how could she think I'd give up a baby? She more than anyone knew how much I always wanted kids. 
second, how the fuck would we explain any of this to either of our families or all the kids involved? How would her hyper-religious family react to me having my best friend's husband's baby? How would we explain to Jay and Z's kids, each of whom I'd held the day they were born and been around their whole lives as auntie? And how would I explain to my hypothetical baby when they were old enough? Third, I would never, ever rely on government funds to raise my child. I couldn't do it, couldn't just provide the bare minimum with no control myself. So yeah, she didn't absorb any of that, was so adamant that it would work, and then mid-conversation via text with ZJ jumps in, calling me and starting the whole thing all over again. He's super enthusiastic about the idea, won't listen to any of my arguments, even less so than Z did. They both pushed me to consider it, told me to get back to them, and over the next couple of months, they tried again a few times. After all of that, I had a hard time facing them. I went to less gatherings, I started communicating less, stopped responding to texts, asking about the whole pregnancy buddy thing, then any texts at all. Z did end up having another baby, and I've never met him, and I haven't seen her and her family in several years. It hurts. I miss her kids. I miss her parents and grandparents. I miss the friendship we had. Recently, Z reached out to me again and told me she's been struggling, that she's having a hard time. I won't give details here, as that's not my place, but I felt like an absolute ass not being there for her. I did respond and talked for a very short time, because I still care for her despite everything. She was my best friend for years, but I haven't spoken to her since, and I feel so incredibly guilty. I spoke to my therapist about it, but she's focused on my mental health, not Z's. So I feel like it isn't an unbiased opinion. Am I the asshole for ghosting Z and her entire family? Am I wrong for not being there for her while she struggles when she was there for me? I'm so stuck in my head with all this that it's driving me insane, and I really need some perspective on this. I feel like maybe I overreacted, or maybe it isn't as big a deal as I think. Though to me it all seems so unbelievably crazy. Please help, I would appreciate any honest feedback. Thanks for watching till the end, wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share, I'd love to hear from you.